Good morning beautiful people and welcome to Malacca. Yesterday we took a two hour bus ride south of KL. We paid 10 ringgit each for the bus to get here and it was super super simple and it is a UNESCO heritage site town and historically it was a big trading town so there's lots of different influences from different cultures here which has created this really artsy colorful place to be. From what I have read online, it's a bit of a vibe. Lots of old historical buildings and street art, really great food. So we're really excited to explore Malacca. Let's go see what it has to offer. When I return from the after show, will you carry me like I am whole again? Wait. We've only been exploring for like 15 minutes and there's <laughs> like we've stopped like 20 times already. It's really beautiful. It's really pretty. I was saying to Jacqueline, it's not used, it's not very often you have like history like this in Asia. Usually Asian history is more like temples, monks and stuff like that. Whereas here with like the history that it has, it's very much like you're watching history in Europe. So it's a very good feeling and it's so really, just, really pretty. We've just ended up at St. Paul's Church, which is one of the famous landmarks here in Malacca. And the reason I think it's so famous is because Malacca was originally under, well not originally, but previously under Dutch rule. And this is one of the most like intact buildings that can show that Dutch influence here. And it's really beautiful. I love the color of the buildings here. They're like a reddy, pinky sort of hue. It's really nice. I show you what I wish I knew. My will is strong with a place to lean. We've not made it very far, we've just been walking along and we're not really big Instagrammers but this place is seriously so beautiful, it's making us stop and take so many photos. So if you are into Pinterest, you're a photographer, you're big on Instagram, well then definitely put Malacca on your trip in Malaysia because honestly every single corner is something beautiful and colorful and just stunning to take amazing pictures in. We actually left early to not have to deal with the heat. It's like 9 a.m. It's already bloody hot and then we are here taking photos and all that so it's very hard work so I got the cap and the sunnies but still whoo, Malaysia you're yeah, one hot country but it's so beautiful. Jacqueline is just doing some research because I just show up you know I'm that guy that just shows up. We're gonna cross this river now and then we can head to the Cheng Hun Teng Temple, which is a Chinese temple here. But apparently only 3% of the population is actually Chinese. Uh, 66 is Muslim and the rest is Buddhism and Hindu. It really is every street corner, like we literally turned a corner and we're gonna go this way but then we came on and found this. How beautiful this is. Very, very pretty, like very unusual. I mean, there's a bit of a, look, a Vietnam look to it but it's very unique, more like a European kind of style. I guess the Dutch influence or the Portuguese influence. But it's very cool. Very, very cool. Finally, after a very slow but short walk, we've made it to the Cheng Hun Tang Temple. Uh, we're gonna have to appreciate it from this beautiful garden area though, because I didn't realize that uh, Chinese temples have a dress policy, but I think I have to have my shoulders covered and I didn't think about that today, but it's really beautiful out here and we can kind of see inside anyway, so that's okay. But if you come, wear a t-shirt. <laughs> Also free to enter in here as well and it's just really pretty it's a nice calm place to come in and get like a bit of a refuge and it's really interesting watching everyone because this is an active temple so there's a lot of prayer and things like that going on 
it's just stunning Malacca so far like it's weird because we haven't actually done anything we've just been wandering around but the actual town itself is the attraction and is what we've come to see and yeah very grateful that we took the two-hour bus ride to get here way worth it three times now for breakfast so I think he's hungry so we're gonna go find a breakfast spot now welcome to the baboon house I don't know how we stumbled across this place but you come in from the hot street and there's a full-on garden inside this cafe it's like a more peaceful Riyadh in Morocco it's so nice and it's really cool in here which is pleasant because even though it's only 10 o'clock, it is so hot already. Like, it is really, really beautiful here. Like, there's greeneries everywhere. There's like water features. There's a incense going on, the smell. There's like this moody lights. It's really, really cool. emotional right now this place is just so so good and we got this omelette for 16 RMB ringgit it's huge it's really good it's a very good value for money I asked for a latte but it never came because Jacqueline's flat white broke the coffee machine so they recommended a Malacca coffee which is basically from what I see a black coffee with condensed milk. Okay, we are going to enjoy our coffee and breakfast and we'll see you in a moment. We've just arrived at St. Paul's Church, which interestingly is the oldest church building in Southeast Asia and obviously in Malaysia as well. So this one was built in 1521 by the Portuguese and then I think it was later revamped or added to by the Dutch when they were here as well. But it's sitting right on top of the hill and you can see an amazing view of the ocean and of Malacca as well. So even if you're not that into churches this one is quite beautiful which we're going to show you in a moment but the viewpoint from up here is also very impressive breeze up here is a relief because it is so hot today yeah it's hot and those trees are really cooling and there's the leaves so it's, it's actually very peaceful it's quite yeah. busy it's not the earliest time of the day anymore yeah but it's still pretty tranquil yeah so i think we're gonna go escape the main heat of the day and rest a little before we head back out this afternoon for some more exploration and some good local food yes let's go Okay, after a good four, five, something long hours of working and resting and eating coconut cakes, um, we out and about. As you can see, the sun behind me is setting. And I done some research, and I saw there's a beautiful mosque. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that there's a beautiful mosque overlooking the, uh, I think it's the ocean almost. And uh, we're gonna go and check it out. We've just arrived at the Majid Salat Malacca Mosque. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. 
and it is beautiful we wanted to come for sunset but sunset technically doesn't set till like 7 22 it's currently 6 35 so we've got that nice soft lighting but no pink skies yet we were gonna hang around for a bit and just wait for the sunset but we just got told that the mosque technically closes at 6 30 there's still a lot of people here so he said we could come in and look around don't go inside so i'm not exactly sure how long we're allowed to stay but yeah we're gonna have a look around because honestly it's really pretty it's like these beautiful purplish pink walls and uniquely this mosque has this huge stained glass feature which i've never seen on a mosque before and we've been to quite a few because we were you know in morocco we were in turkey and that lot of mosques there but yeah really pretty it's right on the ocean so let's go check it out very much information online about the mosque but a couple of things it's really new it was only opened in 2006 so it's definitely not an ancient structure but very very beautiful and it has a 30 meter high minaret which doubles as a lighthouse and I think that that's this thing I'm not hundred percent sure what a minaret is but I'm pretty sure it's that so let us know in the comments if we're correct I think I'm right. This place was really good. It's really beautiful and it's very peaceful. A lot of people here yeah, are chilling, enjoying the sunset. But one piece of my body that is not resting and chilling is my stomach. So we're gonna go to the Jonko Walk. Jonko Walk. <laughs> Jonko Walk, um, which is a good place to get a lot of street food. So off we go. <laughs> been starving myself to make the most out of that so let's go get some good food try new things explore the taste buds and uh, enjoy ourselves more importantly Ooh, it looks so good already I've already seen things I want to try we're gonna try the salted egg roll never heard of it before so hopefully it's good first of the night this it's not too big but it feels heavy there's a lot of weight to it so it's a salted egg roll Let's give it a mm. There is some sort of sweet filling on the inside. I assumed it was going to be savory. We ate a little bit more and there is actually egg yolk in the middle, so maybe that's why it's called an egg roll. We don't know much about this, so if you know more about this food, let us know in the comments. Delicious though, highly recommend. Peanut nestum are mixed? The peanut okay. It looks like the freight of a sewing machine, that roll of cotton. It's crazy. Okay, so it, this is dragon beard candy and they stretch it until they can roll it like that and inside they put peanuts. There was another filling which I didn't get, but this one is peanuts. There was 10 ringgit for all of this. It's so, oh, it's like touching a cloud. It's so soft. Mm. Yeah, it's like nougat. It's exactly like nougat. It's delicious, so soft, it's softer and lighter than nougat. And oh yeah, it's really delicious. So they're not just selling food here, they're also selling like toys and plants and hats and all sorts of things here. But the street is so narrow, so it is like a meter wide between each of the stalls. And there are so many people here, so quite difficult to kind of like shuffle through. But it's okay because you're kind of trying to look at the stalls anyway. So far what we've eaten has been delicious, super happy with that. But we've accidentally had two sweet things, so we need to go find something a little bit more savory now. We found our next 
dish. It is po pia. It was five ringgit, and you get this massive sort of like spring roll looking thing. Pop. Yeah, so good. Not too bad. Mm. One thing that is very crazy is how everything is so affordable. It's mostly under all 10 ringgits, which is amazing. It's nice because we get to try so many different things. So we're going to have a meal over, you know, it's like a degustation. Mm. What's a new one? Lemon long an. Lai chi, lai chi. Thank you. Ah. Okay. Lai chi is right, long an. Love it. We'll take it. It sounds delicious. So you can drink first. You can ask more lemon or more sugar. Oh, okay. Mm. Delicious. Terima kasih. Thank you. It's a lemon and longan juice, and longan is lychees. So there's actual lychees in there, so they give you a big straw because you suck up some of the lychee jelly. But it's perfect, it's not too sweet, but it's really cold and refreshing because it is still quite hot. So we went for the well, I went for the traditional Malaysian dish, the nasi lemak, and I got with prawn. The thing that's different here is the rice, right? You said that the one here is different with the rice. Okay, well, okay this one is with blue pea flour rice instead of white rice. Okay, so let's try that. I got a extra bit of samba on it. This one is spicy. Mm. Prawn is nice and tender. Spice is like inside it, so it's really good. We found this one, which is a chicken floss ball, is how it was described. Um, so this chicken floss stuff on top is a Malaysian thing. I've never seen it anywhere else, but I've seen it quite a few times here. This is our first time trying. And we get this. He said it was a little bit spicy, so let's see what that actually means. It's really nice. In the middle is a sponge cake, and that filling in the center is sweet. But then the chicken floss and spices on top are spicy and savory. That's really weird. It's good, it's nice, it's just. The sweet and savory mixed together with spicy. It's very strange. Yeah, it's like you dropped your full chicken. In a cake. In a cake. <laughs> I feel like I undervalued the magnificence of this market when we were back at the, at the temple early on. Because I just said, oh, we're going to a market, blah, blah, blah. It's just because we didn't expect what we got. It was yeah. amazing. We haven't been in Malaysia very long, but I honestly feel like this could very well be the best market in Malaysia. Like, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to start a fight against other people in Malaysia about how good their market is. But this is amazing. It's there's so many people here. Uh, like not that many tourists either. Obviously, a lot of locals and a lot of Malaysian tourists as well. There, the food, all the food we've eaten has been incredible, yeah, as well delicious. as affordable. And there's lots of other stores that you can buy stuff like goods from that are really mm. nice, like just really nice. And the, the culmination of today and how great today has been, like honestly, like this day has been packed with beautiful sights. Yeah. So it's been an overall a tremendous day and this market alone should have had its own vlog in all its sincerity. But we didn't realize how amazing this market was going to be until we came here and discovered it. And honestly, I wish we had another night so we could come back tomorrow and try even more food. But we are leaving Malacca tomorrow and we are heading to the Cameron Highlands. So if you're interested in checking out a little bit more of Malaysia, stick around. There's a lot more to come, guys. <laughs> a lot more. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you. Bye. We're back. We're back again. <laughs>
Oh, you have a YouTube channel? Yeah. What's it called? Max and Jacqueline. You should like and subscribe. <laughs>